on WTO And our reporter, Madeline Cummings, takes us inside on campus planetarium. Plus, the SUNY Oswego campus is recognizing Indigenous Peoples Day. WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Jolie Santiago. And I'm Kyle Spizak. Today, SUNY Oswego is recognizing Indigenous Peoples Day. The day also falls on Columbus Day and is meant to honor the people who were already living in the country when Christopher Columbus arrived in 1492. Hundreds of years later, the influence of Native, Native American culture is still seen in modern American culture, including right here at SUNY Oswego. The college shared a statement on Twitter to recognize the Onondaga Nation, whose ancestral lands the campus is built on. The tweet also includes a link to the college's online land acknowledgement, which says that SUNY Oswego is committed to building relationships with the Native Americans. SUNY Oswego students are getting ready for advanced class res registration. In an email today, students were told it will begin on October 31st. The email encourages students to check their re registration status, submit missing transcripts, and declare or change major or minor now. This will make for an easy registration process, says the student announcement. For help or more information on registration, check your SUNY Oswego email. SUNY Oswego is offering two career networking events this October to help students find a job after college. Campus Services is hosting the events on October 12th and October 19th, so students can meet with organizations both on and off campus. The October 12th workshop is for external representatives from 4 to 6 p.m. in Murano Campus Center's Sweatman Gym. Gary Morris, Director of Career Services, says close to 90 different organizations will be represented. The on-campus career fair will be the 19th from 3 to 5 p.m. at Murano Campus Center's Concourse. The fair is a great place to network, make connections for the future, and for more information, either visit the Oswego Handshake website or Career Services. It's mid-October, which means we're in the middle of spooky season. Here on campus, Shineman Hall is getting into the holiday spirit with Halloween-themed planetarium shows throughout the end of the month. WTOP 10 reporter Madeline Cummings is here to take us inside last night's show. That's right, Shinneman's Planetarium is celebrating Halloween with themed shows all throughout October. This month's shows titled Scary October will combine Halloween and astronomy. The Planetarium is displaying projections of space, planets, stars, and galaxies on a domed ceiling. The events seat 30 people and showings are held every Friday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Assistant Professor and Director Natalia Lewandowska says that the planetarium helps make difficult topics easier to understand. You don't need to be an astronomer to be fascinated by, by the sky and what you see in there. So um, my point is that I like to bring the beauty of, of the night sky and of the universe to as many people as possible. Wendowska urges students to attend upcoming events and showings, including 2024's upcoming eclipse. Jolie, Kyle, back to you. Thanks, Madeline. WTOP 10 Nightly News has been, <laughs> has been off the air since Thursday night. Let's take a look at some local news you may have missed. It's time for a weekend recap. Save back. The Campus Volunteer Ambulance Corps celebrated its 50-year reunion yesterday. WTOP 10 Scott, Scott Brewbreaker was there. The organization says the reunion was to celebrate the legacy of the organization. The event included a founders panel discussion to talk about the foundation of the organization, a roundtable talk about the values and culture of SAVAC, and a guided tour of the SAVAC base. Current SAVAC president Tristan Caruana says the impact of his work with SAVAC will stay with him for a lifetime. People who like I enjoy being around and just the training and like level of like management and leadership that you learn that will last a lifetime. In Mackin Hall, personnel are on call for SAVAC 24 hours a day and the organization is certified by the State Department of Health's Basic Life Support Ambulance Corporation. A word of caution if you own a car, the Oswego City Police Department posted on social media yesterday about their response to several stolen vehicle complaints. 
The department says they found all vehicles involved were left unlocked and the keys were inside. In their social media posts, they provided the theft pre preven uh, prevention tips, such as ensuring your car's doors are all locked, having all the windows closed. You should also avoid leaving valuables inside the car and report all crime and suspicious activity immediately. In state news, New York State Attorney General Latita James has, uh, has filed a motion to keep the Concealed Carry Improvement Act in effect. The act is targeted on, selling, on setting up non-concealed carry areas, non-concealed carry areas, and for those with permits to have proper cause to carry firearms to help lower gun violence. An earlier rendition of the act was ruled down on by the Supreme Court over the Last week, the Supreme Court act placed more restrictions on the act. Justice, Claren Justice Clarence Thomas supported the court's decision, saying the action is consistent with this nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. The state indicates that the plaintiffs are opposed to the state's decision and plan to file a response. Migrant tents in Orchard Beach are flooded due to the recent rain. Hum human Humanitarian emergency response and relief centers are moving tents to Randall's Island. This will make more room for more migrants coming in from Texas to New York's Port Authority bus terminal. As of Friday, New York City has welcomed 17,000 migrants with four to six buses arriving daily. This has prompted Adams to declare a state of emergency and ask for all city agencies to join together in response to the crisis. Here in Oswego County, we've been experiencing fall weather in full effect. Storm Team 10 meteorologist Nick Cusano is here to tell us what we can expect for the week ahead. Thanks, Kyle. So we're going to be expecting a warm week ahead for the next couple of days. There's a frost advisory in Oswego from today until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And it's going to be a wet Thursday, which means you know, it's going to be raining a lot. And there's going to be a cool down this weekend. But first, let's get back to the desk. Coming up later tonight, Tropical Storm Julia is impacting thousands of people in Guatemala. And gas prices are on the rise around the U.S., but how long will it last? Coming up. We've been marinating chicken in all sorts of liquids for 24 hours. These are vitamins and minerals and things that you need, nutrients. The Chicken Speedy is a staple of is our culture. Bike. Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. For the governor race with a strong lead, former Governor Andrew Cuomo is... Barlow announced the completion of a large building mural in downtown Oswego. The renovations on the Hewitt Union building, turning it into the new Hewitt Hall. And as we move into tomorrow, that rain is going to be in our area. Moving to the Diamond now, a sweet Caroline got a lot sweeter last night. Good evening, I'm Storm 10 Meteorologist Nick Sano, and we're going to start off today with fun weather fact. So this is actually supposed to be October 10th, 2009. There was a band of snow dropped, um, a little bit of a dusting of six inches of snow in Iowa slash Nebraska, which is, you know, October 10th, that's kind of early in the semester, semester of the year. So 
if we go on to the next page, we can see, you know, even though it was cold there then, now we're expecting, you know, 40 degrees temperatures into the night, you know, 42, 10 p.m., 2 a.m., 40, and that's when the frost usually happens. It usually happens around 40 degrees, so make sure you, you know, cover those plants. Make sure they're nice and safe. Then 8 a.m., it's going to be 46 degrees, so make sure you take a jacket if you're going out to work or going to school. So then tomorrow, we're going to be expecting to have, um, you know, nice 67 degrees high, so make sure you take, have something, you know, the jacket so you can take it off later since it's going to be warming up throughout the day. It'll be nice sunny, 5 to 10 mile per hour from the south, and you know, not that wind will be helping you that much with the warm. And I'm going to be talking about the five days really quickly. So if you look right here, you can see that the 60s are all Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which is crazy. We're going to be warming up considering how cold it was kind of this weekend. And you can see it's mostly sunny, but then Thursday, there's going to be a possible chance of thunderstorms with rain going on throughout the entire day. So make sure you do dress up for that. And then Friday, you should be seeing some light showers, you know, 58 high. So we are going down in temperature, 40 degrees, and then 59 high on Saturday for 45 low. Um, so, you know, it's going to be cooling down off the weekend. But first, let's get back to the desk. More than 100,000 people are affected by Tropical Storm Julia in Guatemala. Guatemalan authorities are saying 155 houses are completely destroyed due to heavy floods in the area. The Guatemalan Red Cross says on Twitter they are performing evacuations in Puerto Barrios. They are also working on damage assessments after landslides in other areas. Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, is threatening additional attacks on Ukraine after launching a barrage of deadly strikes throughout the country. Ivan Rodriguez has the latest. Massive explosions rocking power lines in Dnipro, Ukraine, sending debris raining down on top of drivers frozen in their tracks. In Zaporizhia, flames raged from the rubble of an apartment building reduced to ruins after strikes from Russian rockets. And unsettling images reveal children's playground equipment among smoldering scorched earth. These are just a few of the lethal attacks unleashed across Ukraine by Russian forces targeting power plants, bridges, and other infrastructure. The heaviest since Russia began its invasion of Ukraine. They're trying to spread chaos and panic. They want to annihilate our energy supplies. They're hopeless. Their second target is our people. They specifically selected this time in order to hit us the hardest. Russia says the attacks are in response to the bombing of the Kerch Bridge linking Russia and Crimea on Saturday. Kyiv has not claimed responsibility for that blast. All assigned targets are hit. A senior Biden administration official says the White House is closely monitoring the attacks and finds them troubling. We're in touch almost daily with the Ukrainians and we're going to continue to provide them security assistance. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. Zelensky is set to speak at a G7 emergency meeting on Tuesday where he plans to speak more about the Russian attacks. Activities in the southern Mexican state of Guerrero are slowly returning to normal, five days after a military attack where 20 people were killed. State authorities say they are increasing their federal patrols and National Guard troops to keep the area safe. The price of a gallon of gas could likely rise to $4 per gallon in most parts of the country. In some states, the price has already increased and are up 12 cents from last week, but experts say they may not stay at that rate for long because many previously closed refineries are running again after being closed. It all comes after OPEC's decision to cut production. Ben Bernanke, former Federal Reserve Chair, just received a Nobel Prize in Economics. He shares the award with Douglas Diamond and Philip Dybik for their work on banks and financial crises. The award committee says the foundation of their work shows people why we need banks and how their problems can cause financial meltdowns. Bernanke received the award for his research on the Great Depression. Coming up later tonight, high unemployment rates may be on the horizon. And we have some tips on how to better take care of your mental health. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Athletics, Aaron, there are six big points. This is the one you've been waiting for. This group has never beaten Cortland. Getting started with some men's soccer as the Lakers had two conference matchups for half of the Lakers goals this entire season. 
offense what? is key. You talked all about scoring goals. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. For the governor race with a strong lead, former Governor Andrew Cuomo is... Barlow announced the completion of a large building mural in downtown Oswego. The renovations on the Hewitt Union building, turning it into the new Hewitt Hall. And as we move into tomorrow, that rain is going to be in our area. Moving to the diamond now, a sweet Caroline got a lot sweeter last night. Life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire, but you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. We've been marinating chicken in all sorts of liquids for 24 hours. These are vitamins and minerals and things that you need, nutrients. Oh, the chicken speedy is a staple of our culture. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. In today's consumer and health news, the U.S. could be on the brink of losing tens of thousands of jobs every month. Bank of America says the economy could start losing 175,000 jobs a month throughout much of 2022 to 2023. The company warns the Federal Reserve's aggressive inflation reducing policies could slow the job market. Bank of America is also predicting an impending recession in the first half of next year, with the unemployment rate climbing to 5.5%. A group of strippers at Star Garden Topless Bar in North Hollywood are taking steps toward unionizing. This comes after dancers and management clash on the bar's photography policy. Dancers say a patron, a patron violated the bar's no photography policy by taking video of one of the strippers on stage. One of the workers who complained was then fired while others were then locked out. Since then, the dancers have been picketing, the, picketing most weekends outside the Star Garden. The National Labor Relations Board in LA issued their decision to grant the election, which would allow the dancers and other employees to join Actors' Equity Association. If passed, they would be the first unionized strippers in the US in a decade. If you're hunting for holiday shopping deals, you're in luck. According to Adobe Analytics, consumers are going to see a sharp increase in discounting this holiday season. That's due to inventory growth and a de decrease in supply chain issues plus the pinch on consumers' wallets. The company predicts the biggest discounts in electronics at 27%, up from 8% last year. Consumers will find the best discounts right around Thanksgiving with Black Friday and Cyber Monday. In health news, recent polls suggest that nine out of 10 adults believe there is a mental health crisis in the United States today. On our World Mental Health Day, our Mandy Geither shares some tips on how to deal with common mental health packages. A crisis in the U.S. Many Americans may not be getting the mental health help they need. 80% of those who took part in a recent poll say the cost of mental health care is a big problem. About three quarters say that insurers not covering mental health the way they do physical health is a significant concern. And 63% are concerned about the lack of providers taking insurance. People, I think, are really beginning to identify that mental health is just as important um, to address as physical health. Anxiety is the most commonly reported mental health issue. Psychologist Kia Ray Pruitt with Cleveland Clinic says if you're feeling anxious, first identify what's behind it. Is it fear about something? Is it worry? Um, is it based off of something bad that has happened? So I think what's important is to kind of understand what's causing the anxiety. Then Pruitt says to take a break. Think about ways you can adjust your life. Maybe you're overcommitting yourself. Maybe you're worried about something that may never happen. When it comes to depression, another common mental health concern, Pruitt says to be aware of the signs, which may include 
feeling sad or anxious often, not wanting to take part in activities you once thought were fun, feeling irritable, having trouble sleeping, and changes in appetite. If you're feeling these symptoms, talk to someone. You don't have to be alone in, in the struggles. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline switched to 988 this summer. Early data suggests with calls jumping 45% in the first month compared to the same time a year before. If you're someone who counts your steps on a fitness tracker, we've got a target number of steps you might want to achieve. New research suggests 8,600 steps a day will prevent weight gain, gain in adults. For adults who are already overweight but want to want to have their odds of halt their odds of being obese you might want to aim for 11,000 steps a day. Studies show the average person gains one to two pounds every year from young adulthood through middle age. The CDC says even moving just 20 minutes a day is highly beneficial to your health. Well, we know many of our Laker athletes are getting plenty of steps in the fall season as this season continues. Our sports director, Thomas Turgeon, is here. Thomas, what's the latest in Laker sports? Jolie, Kyle, thanks guys. Coming up, we will talk about some Laker soccer as well as what is going on in the Big Apple for professional sports. All this and more coming up after the break. This is the one you've been waiting for. This group has never beaten Cortland. Getting started with some men's soccer as the Lakers had two conference match over half of the Lakers goals this entire season. Offense is key. You talked all about scoring goals. Welcome to understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and daily access to experts to help your child thrive. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Thomas Turgeon with your Monday Night Sports Report. We start things off with some men's soccer right here at Laker Turf, where Dan Kane and the men's soccer team fell to the North Country Plattsburgh Cardinals by a final score of 2-1. The Lakers would get things started at the 23rd minute with Ryan Young finding his first of the year and would carry that lead at the half. However, the Cardinals would answer with two of their own in the second and outshoot the Lakers profusely 20-7. Oswego now is tied for the sixth and final playoff spot in the SUNYAC and will look at to a matchup against Buffalo State on Wednesday. Moving to volleyball where Oswego State went into the weekend winning 11 in a row going into matchups against Brockport and Geneseo. The Lakers would not be able to keep their streak alive as they would fall to the Golden Eagles three sets to none and continue their undefeated SUNYAC record so far this season. The following day Oswego would also follow the Geneseo Knights in a tight contest that would take all five sets to determine the victor. The Lakers now have to wait a week to snap their new streak created with a matchup versus SUNY Poly next Tuesday. Take a skip across the pond and reach London, England for New York Giants football on a Sunday morning against Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. 
New York would be explosive on the offensive front as the G-Men would score on five consecutive possessions to cap off a 27-22 victory at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. As for Rodgers, he would only be able to put points on the board in the first half with 222 yards and two touchdowns on the day. The Giants now will get ready for their matchup against the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday at MetLife. But speaking of MetLife Stadium, it was rocking on Sunday afternoon as the New York Jets have now gotten their third win on the year, flying over the injury-riddled Miami Dolphins by a final of 40-17. The Jets would focus mainly on the running game as all five of their touchdowns would be rushing. Zach Wilson would throw for 210 yards and have his own rushing touchdown. New York would have a two-point lead goal in the final quarter before scoring 21 points in the final frame to cap off the W. But let's move down to Queens where City Field was packed, hopefully to see a Mets win in Game 3 of the wild card. We'll go into the second inning. Austin Nola facing an 0-2, gets it by Lindor, and the San Diego Bay Padres bats are flying early. They would get a 3-0 lead so far for the Padres. Moves to the top of the fourth, two outs, Mets still down. Kim on second, that one gets by Lindor too as Trent Grisham chops one over him. Kim would steal third and round home the Padres taking a lead early. Now 4-0 San Diego, bottom of the fifth. Trent Grisham not stopping there on the offense, but giving the defense too, running all the way back to the wall with a snag to keep the Mets off the board. The Mets can't get anything going midway through this ballpark contest. Musgrove will be later checked for substances. No results were found, so he would play on, but not even that would save the New York Mets' fate. Top of the eighth, Juan Soto pulls one down third baseline to send Kim and Grisham to score. Kim with three runs on the night for the Padres and the Mets. They couldn't get anything going. Sterling Marte at the plate to keep alive. Machado to Myers, and that would just about do it for the Mets as the Padres advance to face off against the Dodgers in the NLDS with a dominant win over the Mets, 6 to nothing. But that's going to be it for sports. When we come back, we'll take a final look at your forecast and everything else coming up after the break. This job looks perfect. Says you need a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Major Discussions is the new show that explores the stories of students here, right here on campus. I personally came here to SUNY Oswego for the broadcasting program because I love to hear people's stories and to do work just like this. show tonight, we bring you a story about a historic Cheeto. The bright orange residue, residue that Cheetos leave on your fingertips has now been commemorated with a 17-foot statue of a massive Cheeto. The Cheeto statue is currently in Alberta, Canada, where it will remain there until November 4th, after which it will go on a Canadian tour. Wow, a tour. Interesting. A tour. I guess we just got Cheetos going all over the place now, don't we? <laughs> Best things are in Canada. That's all I have to say. I mean, you think about that. Look at that Canadian Cheeto. You're Canada. not wrong. <laughs> all right. This is not the time to, to promote the Canadians right. for a second. Oh. So thank you all for watching into uh, WTOP 10 News tonight.
That's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for the break with Scott and Kate. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic night, everybody.